Ah, uh, Newport, Rhode Island. Home to boats, mansions, history, trains. Whoa. Wait a second. Trains? I thought the only train in Newport was the dinner train. Well, you would be wrong. Today, I'm going to explain the history of a little known line called the Newport and Fall River Extension, better known as the Newport Line. Newport County was no exception to the railroad fever that was sweeping the country during the middle years of the 19th century. The old colony railroad terminated in Fall River in 1854, and that city was taken with its importance as a commercial center. Aquidneck Islanders desired to be part of the growing national rail system. At the time, Newport was well served by coastal steamboats, and the old colony had little interest or inclination to buy an expensive right-of-way from the Massachusetts state line to Newport. Involved residents of Newport County agreed among themselves to offer the Old Colony Railroad a 50-foot-wide right-of-way from the Massachusetts state line to Newport if the carrier would construct a southerly extension. This action had the desired effect as the property offered was prime and located almost entirely along the level shore of Narragansett Bay. It would be scenic as well as useful. On April 9, 1861, the Old Colony was authorized to build and operate a railroad from the end of track in Fall River to connect with a railroad to be built from Newport in a northerly direction. In 1862, the Fall River line was extended toward Newport under the corporate title Newport and Fall River Railroad. This line was merged into the Old Colony and Fall River Railroad, which was then renamed the Old Colony and Newport Railway. The citizens of Fall River felt dismay over the prospect of becoming patrons of a way station. Construction proceeded according to schedule, with the exception of the bridge across the Sakonet River. Initial attempts at overcoming this major obstacle met with failure due to tidal currents. However, substitution of stone for dirt solved the problem. A passenger train was run to Stonebridge Village, Tiverton on November 19, 1863. Regularly scheduled through service commenced on February 1, 1864. The establishment of direct rail service to Boston, Newport enjoyed further prestige with the announcement that the Fall River Line steamships would terminate at Long Wharf, Newport. The famous boat train would now speed on to Newport after only a brief pause at Fall River. This arrangement remained in effect for five years until 1869. The Old Colony and Newport timetable dated November 12, 1866 reveals that the carded time for the boat train between Newport and Boston was 2 hours and 15 minutes, with stops at Fall River and Taunton. The Old Colony and Newport established stations at Portsmouth Grove, Bristol Ferry, and Tiverton. At the time, Aquidneck Island's economy was agricultural, and Middletown and Portsmouth were sparsely settled. As time went on, the railroad sponsored excursions at very low rates to attract tourist patronage. A Sunday round trip from Boston to Newport for a dollar was immensely popular. Another feature designed to attract business was a railroad-sponsored summer development at the Hummock in Portsmouth. Land was available at bargain process for seasonal rentals and many Fall River residents took advantage of the offer. They also bought commuter tickets to get to their jobs in the city. Eventually, the tenants bought the land from the railroad and became permanently established. At the turn of the century, regular stations with resident agents were located at Middletown, Melville, Portsmouth, Bristol Ferry, and Tiverton. Flag stops were made at Aquednick, Corey's Lane, and the Hummock. Portsmouth Station also served the adjacent coal mines, but coal never became an important factor in freight revenue. Island coal had an infamous reputation for being slow to ignite, but once burning, so hot that it would ruin a normal firebox. It was useless for both locomotives and steamships. For many years, the Newport line was served by a handsome express train known officially as the Dandy Express. Its consist included a Pullman parlor car to care for first-class passengers, who insisted on privacy and comfort. The Dandy was a morning train from Newport to Boston with a late afternoon departure from the hub. The travel time was under two hours.
Regularly scheduled passenger service reached an all-time high during the summers of 1912 and 1913 when 24 trains a day arrived and departed Newport between 5.55 a.m. and 11.03 p.m. Added to this impressive total were two scheduled freight trains a day, extra excursion specials, and frequent private charters used by summer colonists who owned cottages in the environs of Bellevue Avenue and Ocean Drive. Several yard tracks were reserved for private cars on occasion. The eastbound Fall River Line steamer would be hours late due to storm or fog conditions. The railroad would make up a special extra to speed passengers to Boston. As many cars as needed would be waiting at Newport's Wharf Station, with a pair of ten-wheelers hot and ready displaying white flags. After World War I, the frequency of service went into a decline that was never reversed. The only notable change took place in the summer of 1929 when a weekend sleeper bound for Newport left Grand Central Terminal, New York, attached to an overnight New Bedford train called the Harpooner. It returned to New York on Sunday night. In the early 1930s, the private automobile and expanding bus service was cutting deeply into the New Haven's branch line revenues. Patronage on the Fall River Line ships was poor during the fall and winter months. By mid-1937, the great steamers were gone, and one train a day was serving Newport. Early in 1938, the railway mail service contract to Newport was terminated, and the last passenger train to Boston left without fanfare. With the exception of military extras during World War II, the one week during 1954 when the New Haven operated shoppers' specials to Fall River, while Stonebridge was closed to auto traffic, through passenger trains from Newport joined the steamers and trolleys on the more orderly past. Rail freight service to Newport was continued on a daily basis. The old passenger station, located between Marsh Street and Long Wharf, was raised in 1939 and replaced by a large rectangular freight house. The combination railroad and steamer terminal at the end of Long Wharf was used for many years by the Navy. Shortly after the Navy abandoned the facility, the former terminal was burned by vandals. During the 1960s, the impact of the interstate highway system was felt by Newport's Rail Freight Service. Daily service was reduced to tri tri-weekly and then once a week. In 1968, the New Haven Railroad went bankrupt and as such was ordered taken by the new giant Penn Central system. Two years later, Penn Central was in the hands of receivers thanks in part to having the former New Haven. Penn Central service to Newport was replaced by the Consolidated Railroad Corpora Corporation, Conrail, however, was merely designated operator of the Newport branch on most of Aquednik Island. Penn Central had filed for abandonment, and with those plans imminent, the state of Rhode Island bought the line from the estate. Title passed on the southerly 18.6 miles. But wait, there's more. Now the southerly 18.6 miles is operated by the Newport Danner train, running from Newport Junction, the former Tiverton-Newport Rail Bridge, at least where it used to be. The bridge was demolished in 2018 due to it taking up space, making it hard for boats to get by. Now you may be thinking, what happened to the rest of the line? Is it still in use? Well, no, but there are still many parts of the, of the line that you can see, such as... These tracks that lead up to where the railroad bridge used to be. As you can see here, this is where the bridge would have started. Here's a crossing. A little further down, tr some tracks. An old small railroad bridge. Some tracks and a crossing that are behind Gold Metal Bakery. And here are some tracks where the old Fall River Station used to be. You can also see here the Massachusetts Coastal Yard and a coach and a sign from the old railroad museum that used to be here, which is now defunct. All right, well, that's gonna be it for the history of this little known line. I'm gonna say it's, this has been a nice thing to do. Uh, credit to all of the um, sources uh, thanks to all those websites for providing information for this video. Uh, they'll be flashing on screen right about now. And I also want to thank my uh, parents for 
uh, especially my dad since he's the one driving me out to all these locations um, to see all this stuff. So, yeah, uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all down the line.